What's up, everyone? Thanks for joining us. This is your Ticket to Reality. Here talking more The Circle on Netflix. I, my name is TJ Zwarch, Editor-in-Chief of AgentsOfFandom.com, joined by my friend, my co-host, Season 2 of The Circle finalist, Lee Swift. And one of the standouts from the first uh, eight episodes of Season 5, one of our favorites, Sam, how are you doing today? Hey, everybody, relax. Relax with the applause. <laughs> Hi, how are you guys? I oh cannot God. relax. I was watching you on TV last night and now we're hanging out. How am I supposed to relax? This is, this is awesome. <laughs> I love the nails, by the way. Show hey, those. This oh. is my business set. <laughs> so speaking it. of love. The nails and loving your look. Before we even get started here, one of our co-hosts, Emma, who um, she was with us this morning. We were talking to Shoe Bomb, but she's working right now, was unable to make this one. She w made me promise to ask, the rainbow cardigan you were wearing, where did you get it and how can she get one? I am going to, I'm going to send you the link for it because it's old. I'm so many, I'm surprised so many people like that cardigan. It's like four years old. I'm going to see if it's still available. If not, I promise to find her a dupe. I pinky swear. Oh, perfect, it. perfect. Emma's a huge fan. She's very sad she had to miss it. We were saying when we were hoping to get these books, she was like, Sam and Raven are the two that I really hope that we get to do. And so we're grateful to get to talk to you, but uh, also pour one, pour one out for Emma because she's missing you. Know you. What? Tell Emma I love her and she has a Puerto Rican cousin if she comes to New York. I got her. Love it. Love it. Perfect. Lee, we'll throw it to you first here to get things started. You know, one of my, uh, well, two, I'm going to mention two people. One of my best friends is Puerto Rican from the Bronx and, mm -hmm. and you uh, he, male guy, but you, your energy, I feel your energy through, you know, it's just, there's something about New York that there's this energy. Delisa is like one of my absolute best friends. We talk about once a week and she's in love with you. I don't know if you've talked to her yet, but she He's loves so you. <laughs> no, I love that. I love it. But I just absolutely love everything that you're bringing. Uh, I can't wait to see more of you on the next episodes. Tell me about how you got into, um, get, got on the circle. How did that all transpire? So I never watched the show. And I saw that there was a casting for this reality show. And I'm like, okay. So I call my cousin. I'm like, hey, have you ever heard of the show? It's called The Circle or something. I don't know. And she's like, yeah. It's, it, she tried to explain it to me and she made me more confused. And I'm like, an apartment, you can't, you're talking to a TV. And I'm like, is it like Siri or Alexa? Like, I don't get, I didn't understand. And she was like, why? I'm like, oh, they're doing a casting. I'm thinking I might do it. She's like, do it. Just do it now. Do it. So I did it. And after I submitted my application, that's when I watched the show. And I'm like, what the hell did I just sign up for? Like, <laughs> you, it's like a fancy prison. You're just going to lock me up and not <laughs> let me do anything. And I, you know, I, you know, when I sent out the application, I didn't think anything of it. It's like, like, if you're looking for a job, you just hope that, you know, eventually somebody hires you. And then as you know, it progressed and there's like more speaking to more people and getting closer and closer to it happening. I was like, holy shit, I'm going to work. <laughs> I'm going to jail. <laughs> How was it being, I mean, like, that was the strangest thing for me was you're by yourself. I mean, and, and I'm really more of a person that wants to be around people and, you know, engaging, you know, whatever. And so that was, I got used to it, but that was the oddest part of it for me. How about yourself? Me, because I come from such a tight knit family, like we're always so close. I think like maybe 20 of us were born in the year 1987 alone. Like we're, we, it's a ridiculous amount of us to go from going to family members' houses and them just showing up or, you know, just like being around that family dynamic constantly to just being not a bus ride away, not a train ride away, no phone. Like I can't even text my grandmother. Like what? I think that was the biggest, like it really, it messed with me a lot. And then silence. I didn't hear any sirens when it was time to go to sleep. I didn't hear, you know, couples arguing out my neighbors fighting because they fight like bandits. I missed it. Yeah, yeah. You needed to have uh, have like sirens in the background. I need my white noise. It's sirens, people yelling. <laughs> I love that. To me, that's soothing. You don't need sounds of the ocean. Come sleep in Brooklyn. You'll be sleeping like a log. It's crazy to me that they don't allow you guys like some video games or just like uh, one phone call home on a specific day. These are the things you're not allowed to talk about. Like... <laughs> Obviously, it makes those random things like uh, a video message from home 
uh, later down the line. We've seen in some seasons more exciting, but the alienation is without a doubt the part that like, oh, I don't know if I could do this. I love this show. It's my favorite reality TV show, but I need a partner. And I think it absolutely contributes to the game itself. So I think that if we had the opportunity to watch television, use our phones or anything like that, we wouldn't be that invested into the actual game itself. So, you know, it's like in the real world, if a random person comes up to me like, hey, my name is Mike and I like trees. I'm like, okay, Mike, whatever, enjoy. In the circle, <laughs> if Mike types on the screen, I like trees. I'm like, I like trees too. <laughs> trees are great. Oh, let's plant a tree. It, I, I understand the method to the madness now that I've played the game. Yeah, because you're getting, you're, it's hard to explain to people. They're, even watching it, because I had watched the first season before I got on season two, but it's it's just hard to explain how all consuming it is, and every little thing every, you're you're trying to interpret it because that's your only communication with anybody, any living soul, and uh, so it really gives it a lot of weight, you know. And you and you're and sometimes you misinterpret things. I think you know. Okay, here's my. I have to bring it up. Bring it up. I I was dead. About your in the bathtub. <laughs> Delisa tweeted it at the same time that Lee and I are messaging each other about it. We're all watching this at, at the same time. And I'm sitting here thinking, not the FBI, not the CIA, the KGB. I don't care what three letter organization it is. They're not getting that out of me. Listen, you just volunteered. I on first dates. If I if y'all can't tell that I don't care, I you want to know why? Because I I'm related to savages, and I refuse to bring my partner to a family function, and my cousins try to you know Sam pooped in the bathtub. No, he already know, and he loves it. <laughs> he I loves love it. it. I call you a I, to me. Your title is Truth Goddess. I just think you're the Truth Goddess, and. You know, you, you, the other thing that I loved on the episodes that, have, and I can't wait for the next four, was when the tea was being spilled about Marvin and you're just like doing popcorn. I had just to, like, and you know, it's, it, it's insane is because I asked for popcorn and I'm really not a popcorn kind of girl, but I asked for popcorn. I forget, why did I want pop? I wanted to dip it in chocolate, some greedy thing that I would do. And when all of that fell apart, I was like, oh, wait, I actually have popcorn. I got to get it. And it was, and it fell apart in front of me and it had nothing to do with me. When drama unfolds and it has nothing to do with you, that's the best kind of drama. I'm just here like, Jesus. That's why we all yeah. love reality TV. Listen, I was just sitting back like, wow. I wanted to pull the did chair into the bathroom, but I didn't have time. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I was going to say, did you ever consider being going in as a catfish? But why would you? You're just... Amazing. I mean, dear I'm Lord. I'm a terrible liar, Lee. I am a terrible liar. I wouldn't have made it. They would have, they, as easy as I spotted out Sasha, that would have been me. I would have been, they would have packed me up and rolled me out like luggage. I would have been gone. Oh my gosh. Yeah. There I, are, I, uh, there are two types ahead. of people that I think of when I think of a truth teller. On the one hand, it's the person that you know, they can just be an ass and they say, oh, I'm just telling the truth, but it's really their just excuse to be mean to people. And the other kind is they just are so confident in themselves that they don't need to put the bullshit in front. They don't need to lie. They don't need to try and build themselves up at other people's expense. And I think that's why so many of us have gravitated towards you, Sam, is that's the kind that you are, is you're just out there being yourself. And it's so fun to watch. Am I... Per, to be perfectly honest with you, from the I'm watching the first episode and I said, wow, this is, I love this cast. This is the most fun I've had since season one and two. I think, I think I'm cheering for Raven, but my God, do I want to be Sam's best friend in real life? <laughs> <laughs> and I could appreciate that honesty. I could appreciate that because I don't expect to be everybody's cup of tea, but I know I'm damn sure somebody shot a whiskey and I'm all right with that. But I am That's all right. With that, Absolutely. I'd rather be known as being someone who's always honest and upfront. I'd rather be known as somebody who's pooped in a bathtub and, and has no problem talking about it. Just don't ever call me a liar. Don't call me a liar. Oh, me too. Oh, I'm so like that. I, oh, yes. I, I That's when I bring out the big guns because I can't stand that, you know. Of course, I catfish. What am I saying? That's what I'm... <laughs> what profile picture didn't look like you, Lee? <laughs> 
okay, that's well, one of uh, the important things I think for catfishing though to be successful is the face can be different but the personality still has to be so much you and Lee that's something you did so well that's something um Delisa did so well is also I'm um, what what do you th- uh, think obviously keeping it spoiler free here but the catfishes that we got from the first round it's mind-blowing to me how for lack of a better term, mediocre of a job Brett and Xanthi were doing on uh, as themselves here. Then they come in as a catfish, as Jen, they're crushing it. But what I think works for them is that Brett is very tactical. He's thinking, okay, Mm -hmm. how can I do X, Y, and Z? And Xanthi brings that feminine energy because Brett could never play Jennifer alone. And I don't think Xanthi could play Jennifer alone. So whatever superhero, because they had me convinced, whatever superhero powers they combined and created this like, Optimus Prime profile thing, they they crushed it. They crushed it. They're amazing. I, I love them. And I loved, uh, you know, we did, uh, for those, I hope you're all caught up that are watching and listening. Um, when Shabam went in there and they saw each other, I love that meeting. And, and that's so a question. Unique. It was. That's one thing I wanted to ask you. It was very strange to me, which I didn't realize, watching the show and playing the show. Because, you know, it takes so long. And you finally, and you're watching it with everybody else. You don't, we yep. don't get free screeners. Was there anything that was like a surprise to you in these first eight episodes? You're like, oh, wow, that's what was going on. And I was thinking this. So I had my suspicions about Bruno like that. I, but they didn't, of course they didn't show it. But I always said, I was like, that is not a boy. That is not a model. That is, I, I imagine him as someone like aunt, like who like makes pastries. I don't know. And then with Brittany, that blew my, I did not expect this chocolate man to pop up on my screen. They didn't show it in the edit, but I was literally sitting on my bathroom floor. Like, I'm just like, <laughs> he looks like Uncle Phil. He looks like Uncle Phil from the, that is not Brittany. It was, it was something else. I was He's so him. adorable too. I wish he'd come in as himself. I thought he was amazing. I tell him that all the time. He's like, yeah, but could you imagine me 50 something flirting with these younger, younger girls? I'm like, I see you. <laughs> I, I see yeah. Point. yeah he's, yeah i just i just thought you know because you get to see it on the screen you know when you're watching it here and mm-hmm. over there it's this you know, like you said the young girl and that in your mind you're thinking that's that person so not i love it not as as you are lee oh <laughs> Thank on that you. note, this is something I asked you, Mom, as well. This is something we're going to ask Raven later. We're your five seasons through here. I know you hadn't watched it uh, a ton before you were on, but who, in your opinion, has been the best circle player or among the best circle players through five seasons? Who did you watch and just think, like, damn, their game is good? So immediately something that stands out to me because I've been told that he and I played a very similar game joey season one um season one because you know he didn't make alliances with everyone he found his core group he stuck with them and he wrote it out until the end and me because i'm so loyal to chaz and raven like i just I, that i could understand because i don't want to be buddy buddy with everybody just give me my two little friends leave me alone um and his honesty you've seen how he would be straight to the point in the group chats and and i don't bite my tongue so i would say i am the female joey <laughs> I think that's a good call. I agree with that. What do you think, TJ? I agree. I think she, you definitely give me that vibe. I love it. I will say you gave me a better first impression than Joey did. Joey on episode one, I was thinking like, ah, this is your classic reality TV guy, you know, another bro out here. And then he was the most kind hearted, genuine person I have ever seen in my life. You gave that off from day one. That's Lee can back us up here. Lee, Emma, and the other Ticket to Reality crew were saying, like, obviously we were rooting for Shubham because we knew him uh, from season one and we loved him. But it was Sam, Chaz, Raven. That was all of our big threes. And it was so incredible to see you guys link up as an alliance from the get-go because that was like, all right, this is who we're cheering for. And it kind of made it a lot more fun to to root together. I was saying um, in a previous interview, I'm like, they're like, oh, you know, what made you gravitate towards Ch- uh, Chaz? I'm like, he likes chicken. It's I'm so easily swayed. <laughs> like, he likes it didn't make the edit, but the first time that I saw Raven's profile, I was like, I like her eyebrows. That's my best friend. That's it. Just, there you it go. Literally that easy to just. That's it. I'm. I'm right. I'm in this. Mm-hmm. 
And you would have sussed out Tamara in this first eight episodes with the makeup, but she lucked out, uh, you know, I mean, because she was struggling and I I was like, oh, is she going to make it? I was literally, I was like, is this how the kids do their makeup? I didn't want to just write her off. I'm like, maybe this is a new technique and makeup's always evolving. Lee, if you, I looked like a thumb by the time. <laughs> I was serious damage control. I was, no, I just... And I'm surprised they didn't add it into the final edit. I'm just in the mirror looking at myself, blinking slowly. Like, <laughs> I loved it. I love it. You bring so such great energy. Now, you've got some games for, for her, don't you? Do you have some games? I do. I do. I can't go. You were there playing the week one games, and so I can't go the full uh, blast like we did for Shoebomb. But one of my favorite ones, and I was so disappointed that, you know, they only asked – uh, two people. They only asked Jen and they only asked Tom Tom uh, as they were the new ones here. But talk. <laughs> I saw you tweet that name the other day. That's why. I, that's what I had to bring that in. <laughs> um, talk talk flirty to us, Sam. Tell us your best pickup line. Yes, go. Oh, I love it. Oh, this is gonna be bad. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, we got the we got the, the the eighteen plus sticker on the Ticket to Reality podcast. You're fine here. We talked oh. to Michelle Ryder from season three, and she didn't give me a verbal pickup line, but told me it would involve wearing no bra and bending over to tie her shoelaces. Well, I never wear bras, and my boobs practically touch my feet already. I got saggy maggies, so I don't think that'll work in my favor. I just ooh. now let me tell you, I'm big on eye contact. So if I'm feeling somebody, that's it. I'm gonna get them. I just reel them in. But, ooh, the worst pickup line that was ever told to me that I recycled was um, this guy randomly. He was like, your mother and father must be terrorists because you're the bomb. I was like, what? The <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, I... That was horrible. And he was, he's, 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 oh, okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so how many, how many weeks did you date him? <laughs> You know what? He's actually on his way home from work. Um, he's picking up. <laughs> I'll pitch oh, you my God. best one from when I was on the dating apps, and uh, I'm thankful. I'm, I I didn't use this one on my current wife, which is good because maybe it wouldn't have worked out. But I did meet my wife on uh, a dating app. But when I would would download them just for for fun because I'm bored, and you know it's a it's a it's a Wednesday. I got nothing going on. I just want to do some swiping. Um, my, my favorite I'd use was, Hey, I just got, I just got pulled over, uh, for a distracted driving, uh, from a cop and I showed him your profile and I just told him I was trying to craft this nice message to you. And that's why I was looking at my phone. And he said, the only way I wouldn't get a ticket is if I got your number. Do you think you could help me out? Oh, I would have given you my social. I would have given you my social. <laughs> <laughs> <I'm smooth. laughs> That's pretty, that's smoother than I got because I've been with my husband for 30, going on 35 years in September. So no, I don't have any pickup lines at all. What is your status? Are you single? Are you coupled up or what's going on? I am in any modern day healthy relationship where we break up every three days and then get back together on the weekend. Um, yeah. yeah like, that works. It's, a, it's, a, it's an entanglement mixed with confusion and affection. Put it in a blender. Hey, listen, uh, husband and I, we're, we, yeah, we live together, but he always says, like, I say something, he goes, well, you know what you can do about it? <laughs> you know, go out the door. So I think the spice, you got to have that energy because if it's flat, it's boring. Very true. Very true. I mean, this is, this is forever. This is permanent. This is written in Sharpie. You ain't going to erase me. You ain't going nowhere. I'm <laughs> You're watching this? I wish you would try to leave me. <laughs> you see these nails? You're not going anywhere. <laughs> I'm press one. I'll pop them up and make a fist. <laughs> oh, my God. Well, so adorable. Oh. Sam, thank you so, so much for joining us. This has been a blast. Uh, we're going to put this up Monday or Tuesday in prep for uh, the next four episodes of The Circle. Yes. But... Like I mentioned, obviously we're only eight episodes through, but we, we're cheering hard for you. This has been a phenomenal uh, season of TV and your emotion, your genuineness, your heart, it's, it's leading the charge. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Don't make a yeah, game we... to cry. These fake eyelashes will be on the floor. 
We adore That's you. Great. We we really adore you. And I can't wait to meet you in real life. It's going to happen. We'll make it happen. Cause, and and be, be ready. I'm a hugger. I'm a hugger. So Hug me. I'm going to sniff the hell out of your neck. Okay. <laughs> it's available. It's available. Thank you this, so much. The circle on Netflix truly gets to uh, show you a different side of people than you get to see on most reality TV shows. And I think one of the things that's so great about it is it brings people together so much more than other reality TV shows. You see the cast through these first five seasons. You're all friends. You all love each other. And so I uh, hope it gets to uh, that gets to happen where you two get to link up. I'm going to sneak into Lee's suitcase for one of these circle events and uh, and make my way into them one of, one of these days. But uh, Sam, thanks so much for joining us. Ticket to Reality podcast available anywhere you get your podcasts. And uh, we are cheering for you. And uh, good luck. Thank you, thank you, thank you.